Hey guys, welcome to the 48th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the substring method. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button, and once you have that on your form, just double click on it. So before we've looked a little bit at strings, and the substring method is in the strings class, and we're going to be looking at that a little bit today. So previously we looked at um, working with strings, like creating a string and uh, displaying it in the message box and stuff like that. But so we're just going to go ahead right here and create a new string. So just going to do string. Let's call it name, and we'll just set it equal to someone's name. I'm just going to keep it simple and make it John Smith. So say we want to isolate only the John right here. We don't want the last name Smith. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new string called the last name. And we only want to get this John right here, but we don't want to like just set it equal to John. We want to have it do something with this string up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the substring method. So in order to access the substring method, we're just going to have to type um, the string that we're going to make the substring out of. So we're going to do name dot substring. And what substring does is it will create um, a smaller string out of a larger string. It creates like a child string. So it'll create a string out of part of this string. So we'll only want John. Well, it will just take this John right out right here and make it into a new string. But first, we have to tell it where we want it to begin reading and stop reading. So where we want it to start, where we want it to end. We want it to start at this J and end at this space right here. So the two parameters that we have to pass through is the start index, which is where it will start reading. It says the zero base starting character position of a struct substring in this instance, and basically just where it's going to start reading. We want it to start at zero. So this, the first one is zero, then it goes one, two, and so on. So we want it to be zero right here, because we want it to start at the very beginning. And then the next parameter is the length, or the number of characters in the substring or basically just how much you want it to read. And we want it to read four because we want it to read John, which is four characters. So we want it to read the J, the O, the H, and the N. So we're just going to go ahead and put four right here. So now this last name, or oops, we want it to get the first name. So we want it to get John. So this first name right here should be equal to John. So now if we just do mbox and display this uh, substring, this first name string in a message box, we should get John. Yep, we got John. So say you want to get Smith now. Well, in order to do that, we're just going to create another string. Let's call it last name this time. And we'll also display that in a message box. But anyway, now to access this, the starting position won't be 0 anymore. It's going to be 5 because we're going to start here. It's going to be 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, 4, and 5. So this S is the 5th. Uh, so we're just going to do 5 for the starting position. And since Smith is 5 characters long, we're going to put 5 right here. So now when we debug, we should get Smith in a message box. Yep. And you don't necessarily need this right here. You can just, um, just have the 5. And you can only do this if you're reading to the end of the string. So since it knows we want it to start at 5 and we just want it to read to the end of the string, it'll just do that. It'll start at 5 and just read to the end of the string. But this wouldn't work if you had like a whole bunch of crap after this. Because like now if we did that, we'll get like Smith and then a whole bunch of that stuff. Yeah. But if we were to go ahead back here and put 5, so it'll read 5 characters, which is just that, then we'll get just Smith. Yep. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial on substrings. In the next tutorial, we're going to continue on looking at some more of the methods inside of the strings class. So, see you guys.